This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth, and if you guys like eating bacon as much as I do, you might be very interested in today's report because these little guys here are now poised to be the first widely consumed gene-edited animals. Virus-resistant pigs are trotting towards the market. In fact, the U.S. has already approved CRISPR pigs for food. Pigs whose DNA makes them resistant to a virus could be the first big consumer product using gene editing. And uh, in case you didn't know, these gene edited pigs may now soon enter the Canadian market as well, but questions about their impact remain. In fact, the Canadian government is currently having open consultations about this. This is going from June 20th to July 20th, 2025 where they want to get your input on the risks that are associated with, you know, consuming gene edited pigs. Um, and in case you didn't know, uh, CRISPR is this technology we're talking about here. You've probably already heard about CRISPR, the revolutionary technology that allows us to edit the DNA of living organisms. Uh, and specifically now they're venturing into the area of precision microbiome editing that uses CRISPR in an effort to solve seemingly insurmountable problems like asthma, Alzheimer's, and climate change, if you can believe that, guys. So where do you think all this stuff is heading? Well, as usual, sometimes you can look to China as a blueprint for what we can expect in the near future, where these Ch a Chinese team is behind extreme animal gene experiments, and they say it may lead to super soldiers who can survive nuclear fallout. Modified human embryonic stem cells showed supernatural resistance against radiation, according to a paper by the Academy of Military Science, Science teams in Beijing. So here we have human beings playing God once again by, you know, trying to edit genes and, and doing this in regards to the food we are going to consume. Gee, I wonder what could go wrong, folks. We're going to talk about all of this and much, much more in this video, but Really quickly before we do, I want to let you know I have this Give, Send, Go campaign where you can help save and protect Press for Truth. Um, I'll put a link to this in the description. You can read my little write-up here. I've also included a, uh, a, a link to where you can uh, contribute Bitcoin if you are happen to be in that space. It's up today to an all-time record high. So uh, if that's something you would like to do, uh, please check that top link in the description below. Thank you so much to everybody here who has already contributed already. I can't do this work without the support that comes from people like you. So thank you very much for that. All right, guys, check this out. Uh, gene edited pigs may soon enter the Canadian market, but questions about their impact remain. The Canadian government is currently considering approving the entry of gene edited pigs into the food system. <laughs> like, what on earth is causing people to think that messing with God's perfect creation here is a good idea? I mean, it's just like Homer Simpson once said, this is like a magical animal because it gives us pork chops and ham and bacon, among other things. But this is exactly what is happening. Uh, they're, they're messing with God's perfect creation using CRISPR gene editing technology, genetic changes can be created precisely and efficiently without introducing foreign genetic materials. If approved, these pigs would be the first gene edited food animals available for sale in Canadian markets. Uh, my research examines how including the public in decision making uh, uh, around this uh, merging applications of genomics can help mitigate potential harms. These pigs are resistant to porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome, or PRRS, a horrible and sometimes fatal disease that affects pigs worldwide. PRRS has significant economic, food security, and animal welfare implications. The United States Food and Drug Administration recently greenlit the commercial production of gene-edited pigs. So the question now is, will the Canadian government follow suit? And as I've said, they, they are now currently having open consultations to assess the risks of these gene-edited pigs. 
Um, you've got 10 more days as of the making of this video. And we see here the background on the consultation on certain living organisms new to Canada. Environment and Climate Change Canada and Health Canada are promoting more public engagement in the risk assessment of higher organisms such as genetically modified fish, insects, and livestock animals. And if you're wondering why Environment and Climate Change Canada is even involved in this in the first place, well, I'll point you to this TED Talk from uh, the, one of the p people who developed this technology uh, and won a Nobel Prize for her groundbreaking work in this field, where she kind of explains a little bit of the tech here in this video. Over the past decade, I've been at the forefront of developing a revolutionary technology called CRISPR that has come from the study of how bacteria fight viral infection. CRISPR is amazing because it allows us to precisely edit the DNA in living organisms, including in people and plants. Oh, yeah. With CRISPR, Great. we can change, remove, or replace the genes that govern the function of cells. This means that we now have the ability to use CRISPR like a word processor to find, cut, and paste text. Oh, yeah, you can just copy and paste text, you know, just, just it's simple. You know, playing, playing God is a piece of cake. <laughs> Again, obviously this has major, major implications. And as we said, you can look to, to, to China for the blueprint of some of the things that may come of this. You've got this team behind extreme animal gene experiments who are trying to create super soldiers <laughs> who can survive nuclear fallout. A team of military medical scientists in China say it has inserted a gene from the microscopic water bear into human embryonic stem cells, and they significantly increased the cell's resistance to radiation. Um, they say uh, the success in this unprecedented experiment could lead to super tough soldiers who could survive nuclear fallout. And, you know, that's obviously a major step towards, you know, this like crazy future that we're heading to. But we're already seeing smaller steps in regards to what we're talking about today. CRISPR slices virus genes out of pigs, but will it help make organ transplants to humans safer? Yeah, I don't think so, folks. And it's certainly not going to make the food that we consume any safer as well. They're, they're going to end up using us as the guinea, pig, guinea pigs in this whole thing. And really, a lot of it kind of amounts to this thing I've been talking about for a long time, which is a war on farmers. Um, I put together this video last year. They want to control the food. Will the next flu psyop? be aimed at farmers, where in this video I, I spoke with Curtis Stone about the planned monopolization of food, how the powers that ought not be may attempt to achieve total control over food, and most importantly, what you can do about it now to ensure that you and your family are not left starving and begging at the government table for scraps. Um, so I'd highly encourage you to check this one out because this is what we're going to potentially have to deal with very soon, guys. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, there's no question about it. There will be another PSYOP that's going to be eventually aimed at farmers. Um, if you haven't seen this, guys, there's a good chance you haven't. I did a deep dive on the Universal Ostrich Inc. situation. And uh, again, if you're not familiar with that, this is a case of where the Canadian government was going to call these healthy birds that were at one time meant for human consumption. But in case you didn't know, uh, the situation flipped when this company started using the ostriches and their eggs and the so-called antibodies in the eggs to try to fight off, you guessed it, viruses like COVID-1984 and upcoming variants. And, and really, it just perpetuated the government narrative that you have to be afraid of that type of thing. But again, I, I think this whole thing is leading to a massive war on backyard farmers. Um, and that's why we have to get back to something a lot more like this.
ladies and gentlemen, because, you know, as we've seen, this CRISPR technology is going to eventually be uh, approved. I mean, the, the FDA has already approved it for consuming food uh, in America. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just a few more steps away from the Canadian market doing the same thing. They're taking this, you know, consultation process right now to assess the risks of this, but it's pretty likely they're just going to move forward on it. And this is the kind of stuff you're going to see in the grocery stores. You know, when we, when we try to consume what, as I said, God has already perfectly perfected and should not be messed with. So just wanted to bring that to your attention, guys. We, we got to move back to this idea of backyard farming, raising our own self-sustainable uh, garden and, and, and animals that we can consume safely. Um, it, this is a uh, photo of my grandmother um, sitting here with a whole bunch of uh, rabbits that she killed uh, for food. This is my grandma. I remember we used to eat a lot of rabbit stew with fish and potatoes because that's what surrounded their self-sustainable off-grid on the lake home. And honestly, I can't wait to get back to living exactly how my grandparents did. I'm getting close to achieving my goals. It's been a lot of hard work and it's going to get a heck of a lot harder, but living like my grandparents did is everything to me right now. Stay tuned for updates coming from the homestead, hopefully sooner than later. So in light of all the stuff we've been talking about today, guys, I hope you too are working on that self-sustainable backyard uh, garden, uh, you know, at least taking the first steps in that area because I think our food security is going to be one of the biggest important things moving forward. And this is going to be one of your best assets moving forward. You know, a, a lot of people are putting, you know, their time and energy into gold, silver, crypto. These are all good things. But at the end of the day, it, it, it's, you, you can't consume any of that, you know, when, uh, when things really, really go awry. So this is, this is the kind of stuff we have to get back to right here. Um, once again, if you haven't seen my interview here, make sure you check it out. Henry Kissinger once said, who controls the food supply controls the people, who controls the energy can control whole continents, and who controls money controls the world. Henry Kissinger knew that in order to, you know, be able to control the people, you have to control the food. And this current march toward their desired levels of total control is well underway, but what's that going to mean for uh, small-time farmers? Again, guys, I would encourage you to check out my deep dive on the Universal Ostrich Inc. situation. This one plays like a documentary film. I got a whole bunch of interviews in here. I went down to the farm uh, to uh, interview uh, people directly uh, involved. I interviewed vi virology experts. Um, and, uh, again, this is a, a solid piece that I'd really strongly recommend that you guys check out if you haven't seen that one yet. So just wanted to bring all of this to your attention, guys. Uh, once again, if you do appreciate my efforts to do so, uh, please don't forget, I do have this Give, Send, Go campaign. Um, I'll, I'll put a link at the top of the description below. Again, thank you so much to anybody who has contributed already. Again, I can't do this work without the support that comes directly from you, the viewers. And uh, that's all for today, guys. Just wanted to bring that to your attention. Uh, please click the thumbs up button. Make sure you share this video with your friends and family who you think need to see it the most. And stay tuned, guys. We're going to have more video reports coming soon, God willing. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. truth. The truth will set you free. free, free.